Hi everyone, I'm Helen. In this lesson I will explain to you how to succeed in your writing task number one on your IELTS test. Uh, here on the board uh, we see a line graph and this line graph shows the number of university graduates from Canadian universities and um, you can see we have here y-axis and uh, x-axis. y-axis shows the number of university graduates uh, and uh, x-axis shows uh, the years between 1992 and uh, 2006. Also, you can see two solid lines. One solid line shows the number of female graduates and this blue solid line shows the number of uh, male graduates. In your task one on your IELTS exam, uh, you can see different kinds of information. Uh, for example, it can be a pie chart or a bar graph. Today we're going to have a look at the line graph. And now let's have a look at the uh, complete task for writing part number one on your IELTS exam. The graph below shows the number of university graduates in Canada from 1992 to 2006. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Uh, so the first task that you need to do uh, is to write your introduction. So what do we have to do here? Uh, you just need to write your introduction uh, by writing uh, what this uh, line graph shows. Uh, how to do that? Um, you should paraphrase the first sentence of your task. So here we have the graph below shows the number of university graduates in Canada from 1992 to 2006. So let's paraphrase the sentence. So how can we paraphrase this? You don't need to paraphrase each word. For example, the graph is a graph, bar is a bar, so you can say the graph below, uh, instead of shows, you can say, you can write demonstrates, illustrates, gives information about. So let's write the graph below, illustrates. Uh, the number of university graduates in Canada. So how can we paraphrase this? So you can say the graph below demonstrates um, how many Canadian male and female uh, students graduated from Canadian universities between 1992 and uh, 2006. Or you can say graduated, um, graduated from Canadian universities over a 14-year period from 1992 to 2006, for example. So, and this is a perfect introduction for your uh, task. So, the next part of our writing task is to write down the overview. Uh, you can uh, place your overview at the end of your writing, uh, but also you can uh, put it just after your introduction. So, what should you write in your overview? So you can start your sentence overall, then put a comma, and uh, we need to find the key features of our line graph. So what are the key features of this line graph? So the first uh, key feature that we can see 
is that the number of female graduates and male graduates uh, rose. Yeah, so we can see that um, in 2006 there were more females uh, in comparison to 1992 and there were more males as well in comparison to 1992. So this is the first main feature. So you can write down that uh, overall uh, the number of female and male graduates uh, rose substantially uh, between 1992 and uh, 2006. So this is your first main feature. The next main feature that we can see here is that um, there were always more female graduates than uh, male graduates. But in order to avoid repetitions, uh, you should change your vocabulary. And it's very important to write synonyms. Uh, do not say, do not write uh, female graduates, male graduates, female graduates, male graduates. So you can say, for example, uh, there were more, there were always more women who graduated from Canadian universities than men. Um, the next, uh, you also can notice that, so there were always more females in the next feature. One more feature that we can see here is that uh, the trend, uh, what is the trend? That the numbers rose, yeah? So the trend was uh, the same for females and males. So we can see that the number of males uh, rose and the number of females also went up. So the trend for uh, women and men who graduated from Canadian universities uh, during this 14-year period uh, was similar. The next feature that is illustrated here is that the rise in numbers uh, was not always steady. You can see that first the numbers increased, then they dropped a little, and then they flattened out, and then there was a market uh, increase in numbers. So you can also add this important feature and write that uh, the um, rise in numbers was not always um, uh, steady. And the next feature that we can notice is uh, here that uh, the gap between male and female graduates uh, widened between uh, these years. Now let's have a look at our overview. Overall, the trends for me female and male graduates uh, were similar over this 14-year period, but the number of women graduating increased at a higher rate than the number of men, and the gap between the number of male and female graduates widened over the years. Clearly, more women than men graduated between 1992 and 2006. Next part of our writing task number one on, uh, on the IELTS uh, test is to write body paragraphs. So there can be two or three body paragraphs uh, depending on your task and you can um, organize them in different ways. But the most important thing is to make it in a logical uh, way. So let's have a look here. How can we organize our body paragraphs? So as I said before, there are different ways. For example, you can write your first paragraph um, uh, in terms of uh, the, um, for example, uh, first, you can write down the information in terms of 
uh, males, then the next paragraph uh, can be in terms of females. Or you can, for example, divide your paragraphs according to the information um, which was changing over the years. For example, uh, here, so you can see that uh, between 1992 and 1995 there was uh, an increase, a slight increase in numbers and you can write down about this, uh, this period of time. Then uh, here we can see that the numbers flattened out or leveled off. Oh, sorry. Uh, you can also see that here there was a slight drop in numbers. Yeah, between these years, then there was a plateau, and then the numbers rose. So you can divide your paragraphs according to this information. So according to the years and these uh, changes. So let's have a look how to organize our body paragraphs. And here is our body paragraph number one. I decided to organize the data according to the years because um, the trends for female and male graduates are almost the same. So we would actually write the same words but only with different numbers. Uh, so the first uh, year is 1992 and uh, I started uh, my body paragraph with the words A closer look at the graph reveals that the overall rise in numbers was not always steady. In 1992 the difference in numbers of women and men who graduated from Canadian universities was less market, with approximately 70,000 males and 100,000 females. So the next body paragraph uh, shows uh, the first uh, uh, market differences, uh, market changes. So between 1992 and 1995, Universities in Canada experienced a marginal increase in the number of both female and male graduates to well above 100,000 and considerably more than 70,000 respectively. Don't forget to support your answer with the accurate data. And here we have uh, to well above 100,000 and considerably more than 70,000 respectively. This is a very nice word uh, if you don't want to repeat again uh, for female and male you can just write down respectively it means that uh, the number 100,000 refers to females and 70,000 um, refers to uh, male graduates. So with this word you can show your flexibility in your answer. So this was followed by a period of about five years when figures dropped a little and then flattened out. And our last body paragraph shows the uh, upward trend for females and males that happened after 2000. So after 2000, however, graduates numbers saw their strongest growth rate and by 2006 the numbers had reached a peak of 130,000 for females and well above, uh, well over uh, 80,000 for males. So, so this is our uh, body paragraph number three and uh, you can always come back to your body paragraphs and to your introduction, to your overview and look through your answer 
and make some corrections, try to use the range of vocabulary, give accurate data, and use uh, synonyms. Don't make repetitions. That's it for uh, now. I hope that this video will help you achieve a high score on your IELTS exam. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel where you can find lots of useful videos for learning English and on preparation for your IELTS test. Um, and I wish you have a great day. Bye-bye!